So MIT just scanned people's brains while they used ChatGPT and found their neural connectivity basically died. They couldn't even remember what they wrote. Everyone's freaking out. AI is making us stupid. <laughs> but here's what's wild. I think they're missing the real story here. So today we're diving into MIT's shocking brain scan study on ChatGPT users. I'll show you why 83% of people couldn't remember their own AI written essays, what this cognitive debt really means for your brain, and there's this Tony Stark principle that changes everything about how we should use AI. Plus I'll reveal why this is exactly like the GPS panic of 2008. Let's get into it. So yesterday someone sends me this study. Gregory, look, MIT proved ChatGPT rots your brain. And look, I've done it too. Ask ChatGPT to write something boring for me, copy it, send it. Couldn't tell you what it said five minutes later. MIT nailed that part. But that's not the whole story. See, there, there's a huge difference between using AI as a brain replacement and using it as a brain enhancement. And this study, it only looked at one of those. So MIT Media Lab had 54 people write SAT essays. One group used ChatGPT, one used Google, and one used their brains. <laughs> then they scanned everyone. The ChatGPT group, their brain connectivity tanked. Weakest neural activity of all three groups. But here's what's crazy. 83% couldn't quote a single sentence from their own essays. So 83%, right? 83%. They wrote it five minutes ago and had no idea what they said. Dr. Natalia Kosmina, the, the lead researcher, called it cognitive debt. Basically, you're letting the AI do the work so your brain never builds the neural pathways. It's like having someone else do your push-ups for you. Yeah, the push-ups get done, but your muscles don't grow. But wait, the Google group did actually fine. Strong brain connectivity, remembered their essays, more original ideas. So it's not about using technology, it's about how you use it. Think about that for a second. Google users had to search, evaluate, synthesize. ChatGPT users just copied. That's the difference. Now, this is exactly like the GPS freakout of 2008. Oh no, GPS will destroy our brains. We'll forget how to navigate. We'll be helpless. McGill University researchers found taxi drivers' hippocampuses were shrinking. The spatial memory part of their brain was literally getting smaller. Headlines everywhere. Digital dementia, the death of navigation. 15 years later, where are we? Did we all become directionless zombies? No, of course not. We became better explorers. I can still navigate my neighborhood perfectly, but in a new city, GPS let me actually experience the place instead of staring at street signs like an idiot. Researchers at Queen's University call this brain culture symbiosis. So our brains naturally merge with tools. We've been doing it since we invented writing, basically. Socrates thought writing would destroy memory. He was wrong. Well, sort of. It changed memory, but it also let us think thoughts that were impossible before. And that brings me to something nobody's talking about. Look. Here's my framework. I call it the Tony Stark principle. Think about Iron Man and Jarvis, his AI assistant. Does Tony ask Jarvis to be Iron Man for him? No. Jarvis provides data, runs calculations, offers alternatives. Tony makes the decisions, the creative leaps, the connections. That's collaboration. That, that's what I do with AI. I'll throw a complex problem at ChatGPT. It gives me five angles I, I hadn't considered. I push back. That's wrong because X. It refines, it builds on it, and we go back and forth. By the end, I've had insights I never would have had uh, alone. University of Edinburgh research on extended mind theory from 2021 shows our thinking naturally extends into our tools. Your smartphone is literally part of your cognitive system. AI can be too, if you use it right. See the, the, the MIT study participants, they were asking ChatGPT to write for them. That's not collaboration, that's substitution. Big difference. So here's what MIT actually measured. The difference between passive consumption and active engagement. When you copy paste from ChatGPT, your brain goes, cool, I'm done here. 
and takes a nap. But when I debate with AI about a new motivational model combining existing theories with neurotransmitter research, my brain is on fire. I'm synthesizing, evaluating, connecting ideas across domains. The AI isn't thinking for me, it's thinking with me. There's this concept from cognitive science called desirable difficulty. Your brain needs struggle to grow. No struggle, no growth. Copy pasting from ChatGPT, that's zero struggle. Having a philosophical debate with it, maximum struggle. 2024 Wharton research shows people who use AI as a thinking partner, actually engaging, challenging, building. Well, they show enhanced creativity. Enhanced, not reduced. The key word is partner, not servant, not replacement, partner. But here's what really worries me. We're about to see a massive split in, in humanity. Not between people who use AI and who don't, but between people who use AI to think less and people who use AI to think more. Group one, chat GPT, write my email. Brain atrophies, become dependent, can't think without the crutch. Group two, chat GPT, let's explore why email strategy isn't working. Brain expands, becomes enhanced, thinks thoughts that weren't possible before. Reid Hoffman, the LinkedIn founder, he wrote about this in 2023. He says that the future belongs to AI augmented thinkers. Not people who have AI think for them, not people who refuse AI, people who think with AI. So think about it, it's like calculators. Some people use them to avoid learning maths, while others use them to explore mathematics that was impossible without them. Guess which group advanced civilization? So the MIT study is a warning, but not the one everyone thinks. It's not saying don't use AI, it's saying don't let AI use you. When you outsource your thinking, your brain checks out, obviously. But when you use AI to have conversations you couldn't have before, explore ideas you couldn't access before, make connections you couldn't see before, that's not making you dumber. That's making you better at what you do. The question isn't whether to use AI, it's whether you're going to be Tony Stark or the guy who asked Chavez to live his life for him. Your brain evolved to use tools, that's what makes us human, right? The question is whether you're using them or they're using you. So I want to know, have you had a conversation with AI that actually changed how you think about something? Or are you just using it as a fancy autocomplete? Drop a comment below, I read every single one and I want to know who's really exploring this. Now if you want to dive deeper into how to create this desirable difference difficulty that actually stimulates your brain instead of replacing it? We covered this extensively in the Brain Coach program at brainacademy.com. Brain out. Sharp.